So before I get started with today's project, which is uh, really gonna shake things up, and you'll, you'll see what I mean by that later, uh, I just wanna let you guys know about a fundraiser I started at garagewoodworks.com to help uh, raise money for a new video camera. Because as, as I'm sure most of you would agree, the video quality of my podcasts have, well, they're, they're just not very good. So I'm trying to raise money to get a new camera, and, and even Hank, my cameraman, would agree that the camera is, is no good. Come on out here, Hank. Sucks. Yeah, th thanks Hank, thanks for that. So the camera that I've been using is 10 years old and it's of low resolution. So I'm hoping you guys would consider going to my GoFundMe page and you can find a link in the description and maybe consider donating towards a new HD video camera for the podcast. Thanks a lot guys. A few weeks ago I made these rests out of walnut and cherry for my chopsticks. But every time people saw these, they thought they were salt and pepper shakers. And that gave me an idea. Just like I did with the chopstick rests, I'm gonna take a piece of cherry and laminate two pieces of walnut on the outside faces. So before I can glue this sandwich together, I need to flat each face of the joiner so I can get a nice glue joint. So before I glue these boards together, I'm just gonna cut them the rough length at the miter saw. So I went ahead and took my glue sandwich out of the clamps. Now I just need to edge joint one side and we'll rip the other side of the table saw. In order to make that cut a little bit safer, I put a little bit of carpet tape in between the wood and the miter gauge. At the bottom of each shaker, I need to drill a 7 8 inch hole, almost all the way down to the very top of the shaker. Now I'm just tapping for a 1 inch dowel, which will be threaded in to plug the hole. In order to lay out the holes in the top of the shaker, I marked the center of the top of the shaker and then with my compass I made a 7 8 inch diameter circle. I wasn't really sure what size hole to use for the salt shaker, so I went and checked with some of the salt shakers we have in the house, and the holes are around 5 64 inch uh, in diameter, so that's what I'm going to go with. Using an 8 inch radius round over bit, I'm going to round over the corners. If you've never used your sanding block in a vise, give it a try. Really incredibly helpful. So with the table saw sled, I'm going to cut off a section of this dowel that we formed threads on earlier. Now I just need to take that section of threaded dowel, and I can screw it into the bottom of the shaker, and that should keep the salt or the pepper from falling out. With the slot that I created, I can just take a penny and keep tightening it until it's flush with the bottom of the shaker. When finishing stuff that's going to be used around food, it's really not a bad idea to use tongue oil. So the salt and pepper shakers came out looking pretty good. I'm very happy with the way they turned out. So that's it. So I hope you guys consider going to my GoFundMe page and maybe consider donating towards my HD video camera. Again, there's the link in the description. And at the GoFundMe uh, site, you'll see different incentives and different levels that you can donate at. Thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm.